everybody, this is Nate coming to you from Palin Music down here in Southwest Missouri. And with me as always is my very good friend, Mr. Nash in the control booth there. And today we are taking a look at something kind of familiar, right? You may have recognized this from the old, uh, your grandpa's bandstand back in the day, the old Gibson Falcon, but this is not your grandpa's Falcon. I don't get to say that often, but I'm gonna say it right now. <laughs> this is something altogether different. Uh, Nash, would you mind taking us through the specs of this? Obviously, it's a little bit different looking. Mm -hmm. You know, the old one had kind of a brown Tolex with a brown grill cloth, and this is, you know, this gorgeous cream brown kind of with a little bit of cream. It's a very striking amp. It's beautiful, but there's more to it than just what meets the eye. 100%. So it's a bit like Kit, classic American muscle with a little something extra going on on the inside. So for everyone who... Uh, may not have heard the news, Randall and co from Mesa have taken up the helm and they've joined with uh, Gibson to start reproducing some of their classic designs. Um, and for anyone who was nervous about that, I can assure you, you should not be. Uh, we had a blast test driving these before we started, you know, recording this and uh, I'm here to say it's fantastic. So here's what they've done with the design. So in the power section, you have the option to choose between six V6s and six L6s. With a six L6 platform, you're getting 15 watts. At, uh, with the six V6s, which is giving you a little extra chime, you're getting 12 watts. So, uh, you know, they're using the same multi-watt uh, attenuator system that Mesa has been using for a couple of their different amps. Um, overall, it kind of feels like a California tweed. If you ever loved that amp, but thought, hmm, I love Mesa's, but I wish it had a few less controls and a little more immediacy, I want to plug in and go, I think uh, this is going to be a winner for you. Yeah, it's an awesome amp. And there's another company that's been around just as long as Gibson. And actually, uh, I think Gibson was the first to the race on what I'm about to say. They have their own tweed style amplifier right? It's 12 watts. You know what I'm talking about. If you've always wanted one of those and you love everything that comes with that, the, the kind of the woody cleanness of it, but also like the, the snarliness of it, which we're going to get to in one second. So stay with me. But you've also wanted reverb and tremolo that is tube reverb and tube driven tremolo. Mm. Here we go. And like you said, with the built-in attenuator. So without much further ado, I'm playing this. Uh, this is a Les Paul Custom. It's a 59. It's a gorgeous looking guitar. I don't know if you can see that flame popping on there, but Lord have mercy, that's beautiful. Anyway, so you heard the clean earlier, so this is the clean. It's nice, reverb is, I, I've got the reverb up here, like this is, this, it's almost half. And because it's kind of a tube reverb, it's sort of doing something interesting, isn't it? It's nice and drippy. It's what you would want out of like a classic spring, but because it's tube driven and because it's a lower wattage, there's like a, there's a chewiness, there's a little extra compression. So the initial attack, you're getting a little more body out of it and the tails don't quite seem to, uh, they're not as distracting. You can set longer reverb tails and it doesn't feel like it's getting in the way, it just adds to the yeah. vibe. Mm. Right? And here it is all the way up, just because we're crazy like that. Ooh, that's beautiful. So the, the it has a character to it. It's it's not just another reverb. No. Right. All right, and then here's the trim, and I'm gonna to get to the snarliness here in a second. You've got depth and frequency. Frequency is essentially rate, mm -hmm. right? And so if I crank the depth, it's more pronounced. If I crank the frequency, it gets a little more shaky, you know, organ. Tell 
This kind of amp is the kind of deal where you might just take this Plug and a good and guitar. Go, baby. You know what I mean? You might just roll in with this. And here's why. If I take, I'm gonna turn the tremolo totally off. And there's, I mean, you can speed it up, slow it down, but that's a good tasting of the tremolo. If I go over here to this volume, and I'm gonna crank this, but before I do, I'm gonna actually go down to, I'm gonna go down to all the way down to the bottom. So is that five watts or is that one watt? What is that? Yeah, on that particular one, it's two watts. So okay. you have, uh, yeah, 15, six, and two. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to two watts. I'm gonna crank this bad boy. See how up. chewy we can get it. I'm gonna it. get it wide open. I'm gonna go wide open on it. I'm gonna go bridge position, because that's what you do. I'm gonna turn the verb all the way off just for this. Same thing with the trim. <laughs> sag kicking I in love there. it. It's got that sag, but versus, you know, uh, one of the amps we were talking about earlier from another retailer, there's a little extra raspiness in there that I love that yeah, sure. I think frankly sits in a mix a little better. Yeah. Almost a little uh, range master DNA. Oh, yeah, I think about that. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to back off the volume just a skosh. I'm going to turn the tone up and then a little bit of verb. <laughs> Let's go to that middle position. So this is, this is half. Yeah, that's gonna be six watts on that. cleans up. It cleans up on the volume knob, but even on the neck pickup. Equally at home, you know, doing Stones or Chicago Blues, man. So with that, you want to know how loud it goes. <laughs> I know it's hard to determine loudness, especially if you're, you know, listening to it on a phone, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to crank this up and you do what you must <laughs> on that end over there. So here, I'm, I'm going to ease into it. Uh, here is bridge pickup. And I'm gonna ease into the volume here if I can remember which one of these controls the bridge. All right, here we go. We good? when you use your volume knob. Sounds gnarly and kind of gets in that sort of tweed explosion a la Neil Young and lots of other people. Um, it sounds really great. Since this is a Gibson and I'm wearing a Gibson t-shirt, we ought to do some Gibson guitar. So let's grab some with P90s and one, two, three, here we go. All right, we got the Les Paul Jr. You know what this is all about. Single P90, bridge position, wrap around tailpiece, America. Yesterday, Junior. Let's go. <laughs> I 
I love the way that reverb and that tremolo and that gain just sort of collide in just a swampy mess that makes me feel good. Proud to be alive, honestly. There's like, like I was saying, there's like a present like slight upper like rasp though. Like even with all that throbby goodness going on in the low end when it's compressing, it still like sits really nice in a mix, man. Yeah, and this will clean up really nice too. So a while ago I had the volume cranked up. I mean, I was somewhere here-ish, right? But if, if we're on full tilt boogie and I put this kind of halfway in the middle. It's an inspiring amp. You know, we plug into these things and we just kind of literally just play what comes out. And a lot of times, you know, that there's, there's a lot of, um, and you don't know this, well, maybe you do, but there's a lot of takes sometimes to get the thing that we feel best represents the amp. But with this, we're just plugging in this thing and just kind of... It's kind of baked in. Yeah. There's something really refreshing about that. Yeah, so to that end, um, because... The, there's such a um, character, kind of character quality to it. You might be wondering, does that character just offer itself in a smaller package with the little guy, right? It's actually its own animal, isn't it? 100%. All right, so why don't we do this, just for fun. Why don't we grab two other guitars that are a humbucker and a P90 representative and try this and see if we can get something that sounds the same, but also sounds unique and different and maybe just as awesome as this. So one, two, three, here we go. This is the Gibson Falcon 5. And the question that was on my mind, it's probably on your mind too, can this handle the bottom end, right? And Maybe if you've been kind of playing along or you've been doing a little bit of research, you just kind of know the history. You might be going, is this the champ to this Gibson Falcon 20s tweed? Nash, what's your take on that? Well, a lot of cool things. So I had a friend who had a, uh, what it kind of reminds me of, I don't, have you ever played a GA5? Yes, I think so. My yeah, buddy that used to familiar. gig with yeah, yeah. one. And when I saw this one in particular, I was excited because that thing is... It is a very scrappy little amp, and yeah. it was perfect for the style of Outlaw Country he was doing at the time. Yeah. So I was excited when uh, this popped into my email. So um, one cool thing, they both have uh, what I think is one of the most underrated speakers ever, the uh, Jensen Blackbird, which is an Alninko speaker, which is nice. Um, if you're not familiar, if you've never had an Al Nico speaker like in one of your amps, I know a lot of guys have just coasted on ceramics forever. With these vintage style amps that have a looser low end, that extra compression from the Al Nico is very welcome, especially when you get past the halfway point. So I'm curious to see how the 10 inch version of that compares to the 12 and the uh, smaller cab in general. Yeah, I mean, we gotta crank it up. Yeah. That's rock, I'm baby. I'm a little nervous, too. And by the way, my favorite Nash quote of the day is coasting on ceramics forever. <laughs> That's something like a really successful potter might say. Anyway, all right, here we go. I'm going to crank this up. I don't know what it's going to do. I'm a, I'll be honest with you, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. Here we go.
not expect that. Ah. I did not expect that to be so the little brother I'm gonna crank this scrappy. all the way open. I'm gonna crank it all the way open. Here we go, all the way open. This may be the best fuzz pedal ever made. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow, okay, that is not what I expected. I was not expecting stoner metal to come out of that. <laughs> exactly, it's but exactly. But I'm glad it did. It's like, yeah, it's like sleep, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what we gotta do. Let's get something with some P90s. Let's yep. try that out. One, two, three, here we go. All right, so up next, we've got this 54 Gibson Custom Shop Gold Top, gorgeous guitar. Um, before we play, I just wanted to say I, I did not expect to like this amp as much. I just assumed it was just a downsized, down wattage version of the other, but this is its 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 own medicine. Yeah, not to be cynical, but you know, maybe it's from being in music retail for several years now, but anytime they a company does a flagship release and there's a smaller stripped down version of the amp. I always assume it's kind of an afterthought. They're hoping to sell someone as a grab and go sort of thing. Uh, but for once, I am very pleased to be 100% wrong. Right. So what happens if we crank the, well, actually, with that, you know, you just got reverb, tone, and volume. I'm just curious what happens if we kind of crank the three verb here. Three knobs in the truth, baby. That's right, <laughs> three knobs in the truth. <laughs> It's a cool lamp. I am really excited for this. I think this scratches the itch. Maybe you didn't even know you had. But it's the, it's the I want that classic tweed sound, but I want the reverb and I want the trim. And maybe I want something that looks like it's from yesterday, but it's just a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? This is a really cool offering. If you love, and you said this earlier, but I'm just gonna restate it. If you love the California tweed, the Mesa, but just for whatever reason, just too many knobs or maybe like, man, I could get down with like less than half of the knobs on there because you just don't want all the options. Don't even need, don't need them. Right. Well, this is your Huckleberry, mm -hmm. right? Hey, if you've got questions about this, we love talking about gear. You can call us anytime, 417-882-7006. Nash or myself will probably answer the darn phone. Give us a call or just go to palinmusic.com. There's a little chat window there. We're happy to visit with you. We look forward to doing that and we will see you soon.